Hey everyone, thank you for taking the time out of your week to hang out with me. This week I wanted to cover a case that involves an important topic, internet safety. This particular case is different than what we're used to since, in a way, it has what one may consider a happy ending, which isn't common in the true crime genre. This week we are discussing the abduction of Alicia Kozakevich. Alicia became one of the first known cases involving internet abduction and really spearheaded the creation of laws regarding the internet and also child safety. So I invite you to join me as we discuss not only a horrible situation, but the bravery Alicia exhibited during and after her capture. Alicia was born on March 23, 1988 in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania to her parents Mary and Charles. She was one of two children, having a brother who was nine years older, named Chuck. The family lived in a neighborhood called Crafton Heights and was, in all accounts, a nice area to grow up in. Alicia recalls having a very fun childhood and was very grateful her mother was able to stay home, since she was there whenever she needed her. Her father was not as fortunate. He worked long hours, but he always made time for his family. They were all very close with one another. By the time she turned 13, Alicia attended Carlinton Junior Senior High School in Carnegie, Pennsylvania. She described herself as being an average teenager with a few good friends. She was just living a normal life. During the early 2000s, internet was beginning to enter homes on a more consistent basis, and the Kozakevich home was no different. Alicia's parents thought a computer would be a great gift for their children, and they weren't wrong. Both Alicia and her brother were thrilled. The computer was set up in the family room so usage of the device could be monitored. Alicia was aware of stranger danger, but said there was a difference between a stranger on the street and one online. She stated, quote, People online may be strangers at first, but then you learn about them, and soon they seem like your friends. End quote. Alicia's parents, too, admitted to being very naive in regards to internet safety and couldn't predict what was to come. She soon began using the computer daily. She joined Yahoo, where initially she would talk with her friends. She felt safe, like she could talk to anyone. Everyone online seemed to get along. At this point, online bullying wasn't a common occurrence. Around July of 2001, Alicia met a new friend in one of these Yahoo chat rooms. This friend was supposedly a boy around her age. He seemed to like all the same things she did. He listened to her day and night, interested in anything she had to say. Alicia said he was someone she could complain to and be comforted by. They talked all the time, mostly at night after her parents had gone to bed. Alicia corresponded with her friend for several months before he pitched the idea of the two meeting up. She felt confident she knew this person, especially after months of talking so she agrees to do so. On New Year's Day in 2002, Alicia and her family had a day of celebration with a big meal with all the family present. It was the last moments of her childhood that were peaceful. After dinner, Alicia asked her mother if she could be excused due to a stomach ache. In reality, Alicia used this opportunity to slip out of her home. She got up and crept out of the front door to meet someone she thought was her friend. Looking back, she has no idea why she did it, because it was very out of character for her to do something so dangerous. She stated she hated the cold and was terrified of the dark, but for some reason, she continued forward, walking about a block or so from her home. The streets were paved with ice and the silence was deafening. No one was around. She stops at the corner and begins to wait, but something was telling her to go home. As she turned to walk away, a voice began calling for her. Alicia's friend turned out to be a man named Scott Tyree. Tyree was born in 1963, which would have made him 38 at the time. He graduated from Westmore High School in Daly City, California, and previously worked as a computer programmer. Tyree had been married twice with his second marriage ending by the time he met Alicia. He had a daughter who was just one year younger than Alicia that he shared with his first wife. Oddly, Tyree had returned his daughter to her mother on the day of Alicia's abduction. 
He was described by his ex as a meek computer guy into science fiction and computer games, and up until this point, he'd had no previous run-ins with the law. Tyree grabbed Alicia's hand tightly and demanded she be good and stay quiet. If she didn't follow his rules, he would force her into his trunk. Alicia was pushed into his car and off they sped, her neighborhood just a blur in the rear view. Before long, she no longer recognized the street signs or landmarks, but tried to remember them. Tyree had taken Alicia nearly five hours away from her home to Herndon, Virginia. The car finally stopped in front of an unfamiliar house. He forced her out of the car and into the house, where she was dragged down a flight of stairs into the basement. Alicia described them as seemingly never-ending. Once down in the basement, there was a door with a padlock that he took her into. On the walls were all these devices her young mind couldn't comprehend. Tyree removed her clothing and told her, quote, This is going to be really hard for you. It's okay to cry. End quote. He proceeded to put a locking dog collar around her neck and dragged her upstairs into a bedroom. She was assaulted and kept chained to the floor in his room. Alicia spent four nightmarish days suffering at the hands of her captor. She did anything she had to survive, regardless of how humiliating or painful, because Tyree had already done unspeakable things and kidnapped a child. What would stop him from murdering her too? On day four, Alicia received her first meal and unsettling news. Tyree told her he'd grown too fond of her, and that night when he returned home, they were going for a ride. She knew in that moment there was nothing she could do. He was going to end her life. Alicia cried and prayed for a way out. She knew there was no point in fighting. She couldn't win against him, so her hope deteriorated. She started to accept her fate and fell into what she described as a daze. Suddenly, the sound of angry men at the door pulled her back. They were banging on the door and she was convinced they were there to hurt her. Alicia quickly rolled under the bed and tried to remain quiet while the men moved swiftly throughout the house. They made their way into the room where Alicia must have made some sort of noise. She remembered a booming voice stating, movement over there, followed by boots beside the bed. The same voice ordered her to crawl out and put her hands on her head. Alicia followed the order, dragging herself and the cold heavy chain with her. She tried to follow the orders while also attempting to cover herself up. When she quickly noticed the man was an FBI agent, and she was safe. Law enforcement agents rushed into the room and cut the 13-year-old from her bindings. She was finally free. It turns out during those horrible four days, Tyree was broadcasting the abuse of Alicia online. An anonymous viewer from Florida recognized her from the missing persons flyer created by the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. The viewer went to a payphone and contacted the FBI, providing Tyree's screen name. With this information, the FBI were able to track his IP address, which ultimately led them to his house. Alicia calls her rescue a miracle. Tyree was due to be home from work around 4.30 and she was rescued by 4.10, making this case the perfect example as to why every second counts when a child is missing. In September of 2003, Tyree was sentenced to 19 years in federal prison, but only served 16 years. He was released to a halfway house due to good conduct and prior credit time received for incarceration prior to sentencing. His release created controversy because not only was the family not notified, but the halfway house was only four miles away from Alicia's parents' home. However, it was not long before Tyree violated his probation. In 2019, he was rearrested due to inappropriate internet searches and given an additional two years. He is currently imprisoned in Elkton, Ohio. The aftermath was hard for Alicia. She has undergone years of therapy to cope with post-traumatic stress disorder and significant memory loss. It was hard for her since in 2002, people didn't understand the concept of grooming and blamed her for what happened. But instead of being just the victim, she chose to take her experience and make it into a lesson for not only children but parents as well. After taking time to heal, Alicia at the age of 14 created the Alicia Project. She began touring schools, sharing her story with the goal of making a difference in saving children. Alicia's also become a voice in fighting for not only laws that protect children, 
but laws in regards to the internet. However, her big project is Alicia's Law. She is working alongside an organization called Protect in order to secure the passage of this law in all 50 states. Essentially, this law would provide a dedicated stream of state-specific funding to Internet Crimes Against Children task forces. It would allow for a larger capacity in order to fight against child exploitation. Currently, 12 states have passed Alicia's law. She also works regularly with the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, sharing information about current cases to help spread awareness. Currently, Alicia is 33 years old with a master's degree in forensic psychology, and she continues to do motivational speaking. Alicia has mentioned, recounting her story is very triggering for her, but she overcomes her struggles to ensure today's children do not make the same mistakes as her. I love that Alicia has taken this very tragic point in her life and turned it into something great. It definitely takes a strong person to not let trauma eat you up, and I have to admire that. I'm going to put a link in the description for um, information about her law and the more in-depth explanation. I gave you a very surface level um, explanation of it, and if you're interested in learning more, I'll go ahead and link it in the description for you to check out. But if you guys found this to be informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed yet, you should because we would love to have you under the ash tree. I always say it, but you guys are the best and thank you for making my week. As always, I will see you in the next one. Bye friends.